So we're going to put dummy variables into our regressions. You know, so dummy variables, remember, just take the value of 0 or 1, depending on some logical condition being uh, 0 is usually false and 1 is true. So, you know, for example, the census divides gender as either male or female. Again, apologies, that's an over-restrictive classification. Uh, census has not evolved with the times enough to re uh, recognize more than that. But. So we could define two dummy variables, possibly. One would be a dummy variable male, takes the value zero when that's false, one if it's true. Or we could define a dummy variable female that takes the value zero for false, one if true. And so we could do either of two regressions. We could say, you know, y equals beta naught plus beta m male plus some error, or y equals beta naught plus beta f female plus some error. In either way, you know, try to minimize the sum of squared errors there. Um, but if I do y is beta naught plus beta m male plus beta f female, then this is going to leave that beta naught hanging. Right, because if I have male as the regressor, and y is, you know, function of stuff plus beta m male, then that's saying, well, how are the uh, y of the males different from the omitted category, which, you know, in this case would be the females. So I can say, well, how are males different than the omitted category? Alternatively, if I have female as the variable in the equation, then that's asking, okay, how are females different than the omitted category, where, you know, yet in that case, the omitted category is male. On the other hand, if I have both male and female in there, then they're saying, okay, how are males and females together as a group different from the omitted category? But in that case, the omitted category is empty. I mean, the, again, the census works pretty hard to force people into one classification or another. So, you know, the math basically will not work there. Um, you know, and so regression, you know, again, in this really simple case where my dependent variable is a dummy variable, that's just going to estimate um, means. It's a kind of a roundabout way of just estimating a mean. You know, so if I have y is beta naught plus beta f female, then beta naught would be the mean of the omitted category, which in this case is male. So beta naught would be average y for the males. Beta f would be, well, how much does the average change for the females? So, you know, that would be the difference there. And, you know, it always sometimes helps to do, just do the math for the dummy variables. I'm not calling you a dummy, although sometimes I'll call myself a dummy for not doing the math dummy. Um, you know, so if I have regression y is beta naught plus beta m male, then rewrite that in two rows. So either y is beta naught plus the error if the person's female, or beta naught plus beta m plus the error if they're male. And so the regression is going to set beta naught equal to the average for the females, and beta naught plus beta m is going to be the average for the male. So it's, you know, beta m is then, well, how much are men different? Alternately, if I have y is beta naught plus beta f female, then again, can write that in two lines. So the y value is going to be beta naught plus beta f plus the error for females, and just beta naught plus the error for the males. And so again, beta naught in this case is going to be estimating the mean y for the males, while beta naught plus beta f is going to be the mean value for the females. And so again, here, beta f is the difference. So, you know, it doesn't really matter whether I, if I'm looking at two points, if I say, you know, well, how much is one different than the other? You know, just pick one. I mean, the, the difference is going to be the same. Um, I mean, they're going to have different, they're going to be same in absolute value. So they have different signs, right? If one is higher than the other, then obviously they're going to be uh, the difference could be positive or negative depending on how I look at it, but the same absolute value. But you know, so if I were to estimate y is beta naught plus beta f female plus beta m male, then you know I'm going to be left with 
two equations with three unknowns, right? Because I can set the mean for the males, the mean for the females, and try to estimate that to set equal to three different variables. And yeah, like I said, that, that math just don't work. So you have to leave one of the dummy variables out. That generalizes when I have dummy variables, you know, we're using for like education, which might have five or six different levels, typically you leave one out. If I have dummy variables, you know, you can do like, uh, um, you know, where people were born, right? What state people were born in or something. There are 50 different states in the US, um, you know, so we can have maybe 49 dummy variables because you leave one out. Um, and if you forget, R will conveniently drop one of those for you. In most cases, in some routines that we get on later, it will just return a, you know, not a number type value. But, you know, so you, you want to remember because it, it's easy to forget. And, you know, generally sometimes if you're like subsetting the data, you know, you might um, accidentally create some like missing values, right? If, if you subset whatever, maybe you're looking at only people who live in Brooklyn between the ages of whatever, 40 to 50 or something, um, you know, you, you might accidentally then one of your other dummy variables, essentially there's nobody that has that categorization. And so if you put that in regression again, you know, the math is just going to kind of collapse on you. It's going to complain. So, you know, again, it's worth checking all these details. This is getting into, you know, the complicated plumbing. Now, when we do this in R, R calls these factors rather than dummy variables, because that's whatever different sort of tradition of nomenclature. But, um, yeah, so it will give you some shortcuts, which, again, I'm kind of ambivalent about how much you want to be using the shortcuts at the beginning, right? Because it's sometimes you can slide right by without quite understanding what's going on, and then it makes it difficult later if you have problems to kind of be able to diagnose where the problems are coming from. But whatever, with that said, you certainly do want to get to the stage where you're going to be using these shortcuts and it will be okay because you understand all the stuff that's going on underneath. Um, so again, I recommend you do it kind of a long way at the beginning just to get a sense of what's going on and then jump to the shortcuts once you kind of understand yeah, how it's being done. So, you know, for example, I have these educational qualifications, um, dummies for if the person has a high school degree, some college, bachelor's degree, or an advanced degree. So again, note I'm omitting the lowest category. The person doesn't even have a high school degree. Um, you could also create these into an index. You just put, you know, so maybe zero is if they have not even a high school degree, and then one for somebody who has a high school degree, and two if they have some college, and three if they have a bachelor's degree, and four if they have an advanced degree. Now, again, you want to be careful. You want to make sure R knows that that is a factor. Because if it doesn't, it'll just say, okay, this is variable goes from one to five, and I'll just treat it like age or something. But again, that's, that's generally not the right way to do it because that implies, you know, the increase, right? As my factor goes from one to two, that's going to be the same change as when my factor goes from four to five. And, you know, we generally have no possible economic rationale to think that that sort of linearity assumption is going to be true. If you tell it, on the other hand, oh, this is a factor, this is not like a regular number, this is a factor, then it will say, okay, I will, basically what it's doing in the background is it's going to split the education factor into each of those individual dummy variables, and it's going to estimate each of those individual dummy variables separately, um, which again allows, you know, those coefficients to be different. So, you know, again, sometimes depending on the occasion, you want to, you'll add in the as factor to make sure that R is treating that as a factor. You can check is factor, you know, will return a true or false value for if something is indeed a factor. And again, you, know, you just want to be careful so you understand what's going on in the background.